So in this problem, we're given the circuit and we're given the different values of each component. And we're going to be solving for a bunch of things. We're going to be solving for IA, we're going to be solving for IB, and yeah, a bunch of other stuff. So let's just go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're going to be doing is solving for IA. And so I'm going to try and solve this using the methods that uh, you guys probably have learned so far. So the methods I'm going to use, uh, be using are Kirchhoff's voltage law and current law, and then also series and parallel resistors. So if you don't know how to uh, do those different things, you probably need to know them to do this problem, but yeah. So the first thing I'm going to recognize is I want to solve for IA. And so I know that we know Kirchhoff's voltage law, meaning I can sum up the voltage. Uh, this shouldn't be here, my bad. Let me erase that. Uh, but yeah, so essentially we're going to be summing up the voltage in this circle right here. And so I know that in order to do that, uh, we can sum up the voltage here. And then the voltage across the resistor is just I times R. So we would add up I times R. But keep in mind, we can't have two unknowns, right? If we, we don't know the current through here, I'm just going to call it IX because we don't know what the current is. Uh, so we need to actually solve for that first before we do anything because it's just going to make the problem a lot easier. Because when I sum this up, if we have IX and IA, I can't, we'll have two unknowns, so I can't solve. So we're going to solve for IX first. Now, how am I going to do that? The way we're going to do that is by simplifying the circuit into a simple uh, one voltage source, one resistor. So I want to simplify this circuit. So how do I do that? So the first thing we're going to do is simplify this resistor into uh, just one, and then we're going to combine that with this one. So how do we simplify these two resistors? Uh, the first thing you need to recognize is that they are in series. So since they're in series, uh, how do we combine them? So to combine two resistors in series, you basically just take one of the resistors, in this case, we'll call it 340, times 95, the other one, and then divide it by this, their sum. And so if you don't know how to do resistors or sum up resistors in parallel, you should probably look that up. But yeah, so 340 times 95, divided by 95 plus 340. So it's going to be equal to 74.253. So this is going to be ohms since we're doing resistance. I'll call it REQ. Now redrawing the circuit with this in it, let's go ahead and do that. So now these two resistors, let me redraw it. There we go. These resistors just combine into this one. You just replace it with the one closer to wherever you're going. So this is now the equivalent, which is 74.253 ohms. This is still the same 220 volts. This is 40 ohms. Now keep in mind on the original circuit, IX is the current labeled, uh, or the volt, sorry. IX is the current through 40, this 40 ohm resistor. So it's still the same on this circuit. It doesn't change. We didn't, we didn't impact this. All we did was change this side. So uh, now what we're going to do is combine these two resistors in, uh, since they're in series, since they're just one long line like this, uh, we can just add them up. That's how you combine uh, resistors in series. So just adding these up, so just add 40. I'm not going to write this down. But yeah, so this is going to be our new circuit. And it's just going to be a simple, just one resistor, one voltage source. So we have 114.253. So this is going to be ohms again. Okay, so now, uh, keep in mind, IX is just the uh, current through this entire loop. And we didn't change the loop. It's still the same thing. Like, the current through this resistor is the, the same as the current through this is, uh, resistor. It just flows across. So the current in this circuit is still IX, which corresponds to our original IX. And keep in mind, that's what I said we need to solve for. So how do we solve for IX now? So the way we're going to do that is by using uh, simple Ohm's law, V equals IR, right? So if we know the voltage in this cir uh, simple circuit and we know the resistance... We can go ahead and just divide, right, the voltage, 220 volts, divided by 114.253 ohms. So go ahead and do that. You're going to get I, X, equals 100 in, or sorry, 1.926, we'll call it. 1.926, and then it's amps, since we're just dealing with standard ohms in volts. Okay, great. So we found that. Let's write it on our thing, 1.926 amps. Now that we have that, we can just do the voltage law, right? It's quite simple. Uh, if you don't know Kirchhoff's voltage law, essentially what you're doing is summing up the voltage in a loop. So you just pick a loop. In this case, we're going to do this loop. And it allows us to solve for a voltage across something or a current. It really depends on how you express it in the equation. But we're going to be solving for the current. So let's just start with one of the components. 
I'm going to be using the passive sign convention, which tells us that if we enter a negative terminal, the value when we sum it up is negative. So going to be going this way. So this one, we're entering this side. So negative 220 plus the voltage across this capacitor, or sorry, not capacitor, resistor. Uh, and so it's just going to be IR, right? Because V equals IR. So the voltage across it is, in this case, IX, which is 1.926 times its resistance, 40, plus, uh, and then once again, just I times R, so IA times 340. And when you sum it up, it all equals zero. It should. So solving for IA, it's going to be equal to 220 minus 1.926 times 40, and then we divide by 340. So just basic arithmetic. Um, yeah, so plug that in, 220 minus uh, 1.926 times 40, and then divide by 340. And you're going to get IA 0.4205 amps. So you can round however you want. I'm going to go ahead and leave it like this. Uh, but yeah, so IA is 0.4205 amps. Uh, so we have that. And so now we want to solve for IB. So we're going to use the other law, the current law, to solve for this one. I notice we have a node right here. And if I want to solve for IB, if you know the currents entering the node and leaving on every other side, you're just going to have one unknown. So you just sum the currents entering and leaving the node. So let's go ahead and do that. So we know on the node we have IX going in here. So we have IX. And if it's going in, you want to say it's positive. And if it's leaving, you say it's negative. So we have IX. And then we have IA leaving right here. And then we have IB leaving, so minus IA minus IB. So minus IA minus IB. So if we just want to solve for this, IB equals IX minus IA. Once again, IX was 1.926. And then we know IA, 1.926 minus 0.4205. Yeah, so IB is going to be 1.5055. I'm just going to call it 1.506. And then this is going to be amps again. So we have IB. We have IA. Let's see what else we have to solve for. So I, we're going to be also solving for uh, E sub 0, So which is the voltage across this. So this is actually just really easy since we know IB now. It's just the voltage V0 equals the current through the resistor times uh, the resistance, right? V equals IR. I'm going to just do that right here. So V0 equals I. The current through it is IB times R, which is 95. So 95 times IB, which we just found, 1.506. So 95 times 1.506 is 143.07 in its volts, since we're dealing with... Um, Okay, just standard units. So we have V sub zero, we have IA and IB. Now what we want to find is the power delivered uh, by the 200. Wait, what are we solving for? Yeah, so we're going to be solving for uh, the power developed. Or sorry, the power dissipated in each resistor. Sorry about that. So how do we find power dissipated? Uh, you're going to be using this formula right here. So let me do it. Let me just do it over here. So power is equal to... There's different formulas. The one we're going to be using for this one is just I squared times R. So uh, because we know the current through each resistor, right? we solve for that each of these. And then, yeah, so... Let's start with the 40 ohm resistor. So P, or the power dissipated in this resistor, is going to be equal to the current squared through it times the, its resistance. So for the 40 ohm, we know it's IX, which we found was 1.926 squared times 40. Uh, and so I'm going to solve them all at the end. Let's just write them out. So P of the 340 ohm is equal to, once again, I squared times R. I is going to be IA. 
which we found was 0 0.4205 squared times R340. That's going to be equal to something. Then we have P of the 95 ohm. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be the current IB, which is 1.506. Squared times uh, 95, right? Yeah. And so we have all these. And so what you want to do is just plug them in. And so, uh, yeah, so let's go ahead and just do these. So 1.926 squared times 40, 148. Point uh, three eight watts. Since we're dealing with power, uh, do this one now. Point four two zero five squared times three forty. It's going to be sixty. Point one one or just point one two. We'll say, and then the last one one point five zero six squared times ninety five. 215.46 watts. And so this is going to be the power displayed in each of the resistors. And then now we're going to find the power delivered by the 220 volt uh, uh, source right here. Uh, the way you can do that is different ways. We can just do it using the, uh, the formula, which is P, right? Power equals... Uh, we know the current and we know the voltage, so it's just P equals IV. Keep in mind that the voltage is going to be entering the negative terminal. Or sorry, not the voltage, the current is going to be entering the negative terminal. So based on the passive sign convention, you make it a negative IV. And so it's going to be minus, what is the current through it? We know the current through it is just IX. You can see that. Um, yeah, so minus 1.926 times 220. So you're gonna get minus 423.72 watts. Uh, but keep in mind the value is just a positive value because they're asking for the magnitude of it. So I wanna include that negative if you're writing it in. Uh, but yeah, you can round that however you want. And so another way to do that was just to be add these up. If you add these up, you're gonna get, right? We can just show it 215 plus uh, 60. It might be a little off because we rounded some values, but it should basically be the same. Yeah, so it's basically the same. I got about 424 again. But yeah, because we know that in a circuit, the power dissipated, right? This is something that's like a really important concept. Uh, the power dissipated is equal to the power developed. That's just something you have to know, right? Which makes sense because uh, we have to create this power if we're going to dissipate it, right? So they have to be equal. So this value is just equal to these added up. So you didn't actually have to do this calculation. You could have just added these up. I just wanted uh, to show you how to find that. Uh, but yeah, so this would be the last part of your answer. Um, but yeah, so pretty complex problem. We just had to combine this and then solve through it. But yeah, hopefully uh, you found this useful.